Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I recently got a Royal Safari from the 1960s. It types in script, and it's in this really cool yellowy golden rod something color. I don't know, it's really cool looking. When it was originally marketed, it was called Antique Gold. And I've been seeing this color everywhere. Whether it's spray paint, whether it's my actual clothing, whether it's paint swatches in Walmart, I see this yellow golden color everywhere. And then one of my favorite YouTubers, Simply Nail Logical from Canada, who is a nail polish YouTuber, released one of her collections for fall that was tea themed and it had this really bright butterscotch hop color in it, really yellowy with some butterscotchy caramely undertones. And I had to have it. And then I thought, well, I wonder if that color is the same as my typewriter and I can match my manicure to my typewriter. And then I had to buy seven more nail polishes just to make sure I had the right shade of yellow. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sarah, I'm a 55 year old guy. I don't need to have nail polishes that match my typewriters. Or if you're Lucas from Typewriter Chicago, you're thinking, Sarah, I'm a 20 something year old. I don't need to match my nail polish to my typewriters. And I totally get it. But here's what's really cool about nail polish and typewriters. You can use nail polish to actually spot correct on your typewriter. So if you have a chip in the paint of your machine and it's really tiny, but you wanna protect those edges so it doesn't get any bigger, you can actually use nail polish to cover up that chip in your paint. Nail polish has really small brushes. You can get a small quantity of paint without having to buy a large lot to cover up your typewriter chips. And a lot of nail polish is self-leveling, which means it levels itself out to kind of match the surface of your typewriter. So it can be really useful to know exactly what nail polish shade matches your typewriter's paint. And I actually saw someone post on the Antique Typewriters Collectors Group on Facebook about how they use this very specific Sally Hansen polish to spot correct on their Hermes 3000. And it kind of inspired me to go down a deep dive, deep nail polish hole hoarding problem of trying to match nail polishes to my typewriters in case I need to spot correct or just to match my manicures to my machines. I've done another video on this before and it was my Mumble and Manny series where I tried to match some of my nail polishes to some of the machines in my collection. But today we are looking for a very specific shade of yellow to match this antique gold on my Royal Safari because I do have some chips on this machine and it would be nice to protect that surface so they don't get any worse. So I started by buying that butterscotch hop color from Hollow Taco because I thought it would be perfect. It's super bright yellow, almost school busy, and it's like a new pencil, very fall themed. But I thought maybe this is too bright and I should have been sitting next to my typewriter when I was buying all these nail polishes but I wasn't. I just went on Amazon and purchased a bunch of yellow looking nail polishes and then I also went to Walmart and purchased some more yellow looking nail polishes. Now this machine has some really cool undertones to it and it's a little bit of a dustier finish. It almost looks more mustard than yellow, but I have seven yellow nail polishes here to test out against this machine. And we're going to be testing these nail polishes in a couple different ways. First of all, I wanna test them on a couple different surfaces. It's really important to think about the undertones of the machine that you would be painting on. So typewriters aren't usually stark white when you're painting on them. They have like silvery undertones or they might even have old paint that you're painting over. So I wanted to test these nail polishes on white paper, on cardstock, and then also on my nails because I want them to match. Another important factor is lighting. Light can make things look so different based on the tone of the light, the warmth versus the coolness, even the shadows in the room can make colors look really different. So not only did I want to test the nail polishes in this studio light, I also wanted to test them in daylight and in this antique light because it's really super yellow and kind of vintagey looking. I don't know. It is important to test in different lights though because while I was in Walmart, I was looking for paint chips that matched this color because I'm seeing this color everywhere, whether it's in clothing or in spray paint. And I saw a few paint chips that I thought might actually really match my machine. And I went to grab them at Walmart and I swear that this color, October Leaf, looked perfect and yellow under the lights at Walmart. And the second I brought it home under these studio lights, it's green. So lighting is really important when you're trying to color match something 
to your typewriter or in general. So we'll be testing them on those three different surfaces and in those three different kinds of light. So here are the seven nail polishes I ended up with. I started with this Sally Hansen Hard as Nails nail polish. This is from just the normal Sally Hansen line and it is more of a shimmery yellow. Obviously it's not the right shade for the typewriter. It's too light and it has a shimmer finish to it which means there's like little shimmers in the nail polish itself and it has a little bit more of a cool undertone to it rather than a warm yellow undertone and I thought that that might be nice to compare because a lot of the yellows that I saw were really warm colored and the typewriter itself is just a more cool toned mustard. The next one I tried was the OPI Sun, Sea, and Sand in My Pants color. This is just like a really creamy yellow. Kind of looks like a school bus, but maybe just a little bit more orange than a school bus. Maybe a brand new pencil, but a cute little OPI polish. Next to that, I have the LA Colors in the shade 218 Sunshine. Just a really creamy little bit darker than butter yellow. Again, obviously too light for the typewriter itself, but I did want to try some yellow nail polishes. And LA Colors is a very cheap drugstore brand, so it wasn't that much of an investment to try it. Just a very creamy yellow. Next to that, I have Hollow Taco Butterscotch Hop. This is the one that started it all. I saw this color and was like, I need to have it. So I bought that one, and it's almost an exact dupe of the OPI polish, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The next one is this Sally Hansen in Mellow Yellow. Now Sally Hansen has a bunch of different sub brands. This is from the Extreme Wear Collection. This is just again a very soft yellow, very summery or springy, but it almost has a more cool undertone compared to again a very yellowy warm undertone for the nail polish color. Next to that I have Orly in the shade here comes the sun, nice little Beatles reference for you. I really like Orly nail polishes, so when I saw this one, I kind of also really wanted this one. But again, it's more of a dusty undertone. Definitely seems more cool than bright yellow, but that's just in the bottle, and we'll test it on the nail in a second. And then finally, I got this China Glaze shade in Mustard the Courage. I really liked this one. I thought this would be an exact dupe for the color just because in the bottle next to the typewriter itself, it looks like that exact same shade of mustard. It seems cool undertoned and it seems like there's some browns and blues in it to match the exact shade of antique gold on the typewriter. So what I did was I tested them on the white paper, on the cardstock, and then on my nails. And here's some of the things I noticed while trying out these nail polishes. First of all, this hard hat color had no chance. It never looked like the color of the typewriter itself, but I did want to try another yellow polish. The shimmery effect is nice, but it's not necessarily good for color matching a typewriter in a cream finish. And it is really thin and transparent, so it takes a lot more coats. One thing I noticed about yellow nail polish as opposed to the other nail polishes I've tried, which are usually darker tones, is that they take so many more coats. This one itself took like three or four coats to get an opaque coverage just not my thing, but I really did like the brush on this one specifically because it was thinner than some of the other brushes on some of the other nail polishes in this collection. Another thing I noticed was that the Sally Extreme Wear and the LA Colors, both are drugstore brands, are almost the exact same shade of yellow. Now one of these I purchased in person at Walmart and the other one I purchased on Amazon, but when you put them on any surface, they basically look the same. One might be slightly warmer, the LA Colors might be slightly warmer than the Sally Hansen, but they're basically the same shade of this very mellowy yellow. Very bright for spring or summer, but again, not an exact match for the typewriter itself. And then another thing I noticed was that Hollow Taco and OPI look different in the bottle. They do not look like the exact same shade in the bottle, but then when you put them on the white paper, the cardstock, and my nails, they look like the exact same color, and I could not tell you the difference between the swatches. In fact, I have them on my hands in this order, and I wouldn't be able to tell you the difference between them unless I had them in front of me. Now, you might be able to say that the OPI polish is slightly oranger than the Hollow Taco, uh, but they're basically the same shade. OPI might just be slightly lighter, but if you're looking for that butterscotch hop color, OPI is basically an exact dupe of that color and it's slightly cheaper because it is a drugstore brand. And then finally we have the 
China glaze color. Now when I was color matching these just in the bottles themselves while taking photos, I thought China glaze in Mustard the Courage was the exact same shade as the typewriter. It's very brown, it's very cool tone. To me, this looked exact in the bottle next to the cover of the typewriter. I also thought that Orly looked kind of similar in the color Here Comes the Sun, but it seemed just a little too bright yellow as opposed to that more mustard color. So I was really excited that I had one that was like basically the same thing until I tried it on paper and on my nails and it is a much warmer toned color out of the bottle than it is in the bottle. So next to it in photos it might look like the exact same shade but then once you put it on a different surface it is slightly warmer toned. It's not exactly the same undertones of blues and greens that you would have in this antique gold finish. And so when I went to kind of just double check that China Glaze was not the right color because I could have sworn it was the right thing. I decided the best way to test it for sure would be to actually put it on the typewriter itself in an inconspicuous location. Don't worry, I'm not just painting the whole thing in nail polish just to make sure that it's not the right color. So I went to the underside of this top panel where there are some scratches just from use and you would never see it and painted a little bit of Mustard the Courage next to a sample of the actual antique gold paint finish just to see what it would look like and then I let it dry. And here's where you can really tell that there is a difference in tonality between these two colors. Mustard the Courage again is a much warmer toned brownish color than the actual antique gold on the typewriter. And it's going to look different in every single light source which is why we tested them in both white light under the studios in daylight and under this antique goldish looking light. So even under all of these different lights, the one that is the closest match is this China Glaze color, but it is just not the right undertones to match perfectly with this antique gold. So I wouldn't suggest using that to patch correct on an antique gold finish on your typewriter. Underneath the yellower light, a lot of these colors looked much oranger and much warmer. And then in daylight, you can see that they look really close, especially this orly color looks even closer when you are looking at it under daylight colors, but again it's just too bright yellow. So that's me testing seven yellow nail polishes against my Royal Safari to find the perfect shade of antique gold. I didn't find it, but I did find something really close to it and I learned a lot about color matching specific paints to your typewriter's finish. I think this is a really important thing to be able to do because you never know when you might have a pristine typewriter that just has some surface damage that you might want to repair and you're not looking to invest in cans of spray paint or lacquer paint and a really quick little bottle from the drugstore of nail polish might be the perfect dupe for your machine. In this case today it wasn't but we got really close. Can you tell I've been watching a lot of Kelly Marissa nail polish videos on YouTube because I'm talking about finishes and opacity, yes. So that's been my adventure in matching nail polishes to my Royal Safari. I want to know what kind of nail polishes you guys have matched your typewriters before. I know I'm not the only person who has done this. I find it really fascinating how close you can get and how useful this technique might be if you were actually trying to repair or restore a typewriter. If you're interested in more videos related to this kind of content, I do have a video on the story behind this specific Royal Safari. P.S. It types in script and that's what's really cool about it. But I got this in Chicago when I went to my first type in. I've linked that video down below. And I did a part one to this video where I did match other nail polishes in my collection to other typewriters in my collection to make a full nail polish typewriter themed manicure. And that is my Manny and Mumble, Mumble and Manny video also on this channel. I was inspired by my friend Emma over at Lai Chi Pink Planner who does Prattle and Plan to try doing some videos like this. I've had a lot of fun doing it, matching up my hobbies. Now if you're interested in more typewriter content, I have other YouTube videos on this channel as well, which you can check out here. And then I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching today, for joining me in my deep, dark descent into madness of having too many nail polishes, because now I have seven yellow nail polishes and I've literally never painted my nails yellow before today. And I want to remind you, you're just my type, writer.